Hello and welcome to The Money Honey, the podcast that brings you women in property and finance. I'm your host, Rosalia Lazara from Manuka Media. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing not only an ex-client who I worked with for a while and had the pleasure of being part of her brand transformation, but definitely, definitely now a friend and someone who daily entertains me on social media, especially with her daughters dancing in the background. Um, I don't know if she knows that I know that, but yes, I do follow that. Um, I'm talking about Joanna Streams from Velvet Mortgage and Insure. And if this is not the money, honey, I don't know who is. I mean, have you ever seen a money, honey, that looks like this? No, you haven't. Okay. So let's bring her in. I can't wait. There she is. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have trusted you, should I, to take your pick from all the photos? I should have known. You said, <laughs> here's my album, take whatever you want. So I was like, yes, I knew what pictures were coming. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't look as glamorous today. Like I, I just said to you, I, did, I forgot about the fact that you were videoing this. So I'm very natural today. I've just got a red and pink cup. That's it. Yes. <laughs> and your frame in the background. I love the natural look. That's how you and I met most days anyway. I think most yeah. of the time. No, much worse. Yeah, yeah. You were showing up with your hair in rollers, in pins, in like, you just come out uh, of the shower. Um, yeah. Yeah, you were at the salon. Once, I swear, like, your hairdresser was like, what are these two chatting about? <laughs> <laughs> but that's, right. that was all the joy. That was the pleasure of working with you. And I bet you're like that with your clients as well. You just show up as who you are, right? Yeah. No, well, maybe not. A... They don't see me in a turban with wet hair. I might be on the phone to them, but they don't know that I've got a wet hair in, in a turban. So very true, very true. Um, but look, for for anyone who hasn't had the pleasure of following you or hasn't connected with you and maybe doesn't know who you are, tell us who are you, what do you do? Who am I? So I'm Joanna Streams. I'm owner of um, Velvet Mortgage and Insure Services. And we basically, in a nutshell, the easiest way to explain is we make people financially savvy um, through making sure they've got not paying too much in interest, if that's at all possible at the moment, um, in, on their mortgages. So we make you financially savvy and then we protect your world and ensure your heart, your own little world and what's important to you. That's what we do. So we're in mortgages and protection insurance. So life insurance, yeah. physical illness, business protection, that sort of stuff. Absolutely. I mean, that's sort of big stuff, guys. Like, that's big stuff. Like, it's not, it's not just vital. You know, yeah, it absolutely is. And I've seen you share your story before. I don't know how much of that you want to bring to the table today. Yeah. Um, but I guess my question is, what? Why do you do what you do? You know, it always comes down to that. Why? How did you get into this? Well, how I got into it is. It was a complete, well, it was an accident. It was an accident, but it wasn't, mustn't have been an accident. So um, long story short, but I was working in property. So, you know, still kind of related, of course. And um, I thought, oh God, it's such a long story. So I used to love the show Countdown, right? So I've never told anyone this before. This is an exclusive. You've heard it the first time. <laughs> I used to love the show. I was such a buff when I was at school. I was playing Monopoly. I was watching Countdown. I was doing crosswords, and um, so I loved I loved Countdown and Richard um, Whiteley. Um, and then he died, and then Des O'Connor and various other people took over. And I watched it after that, and I was like, oh, it's just not the same. And I couldn't watch it anymore. And I used to watch it, and I was really good. And I used to think, when I'm a grown up and I've got an even better vocabulary, I'm going on this show and I'm going to win. And then he died, and I never felt the same. So then I was watching The Apprentice, right? And I, and then I suddenly had that moment a few seasons in and I thought, could be a countdown moment. I should apply for this just for a laugh, just see how far I get. Otherwise, it's going to be one of those things that I wish I'd done and never did. So I went for it, just literally as a joke. I thought I went and get past the first round. And I got further and further and further. And I was thinking, oh, I was so nervous. I remember my legs going to jelly on the first day. And I kept getting further along. And I got right to the very end. In fact, it was... I think it was 2010 and I walked back to the tube station 
with Stella English. She was the winner and she took Alan Sugar to court actually afterwards. Whoa. So she, she was that woman, yeah. So what happened was you kind of like do a lot of the apprentice that gets shown. You do those sort of tasks behind the scenes and they record it. So I was really at the end, about 25 people or something, out of 25,000. And there was kind of like the older sort of gutsy woman. And it was me and Stella in that kind of bracket. And we were walking to the tube station and she was like, I think you've got it. And I was like, I think you've got it. But to be honest, I went home that evening, had three young children and you were only allowed to see them for, no, you weren't allowed to see them. I think you had to be in the house for like 12 weeks and you were only going to get 15 minutes to speak to them. So all night I was tossing and turning thinking, please don't let it be me, but I feel like it's going to be me. I, like, take fate, take it out of my hands and don't be me. And then they phoned me, the producers phoned me the next day to say it wasn't me. And then I cried my eyes out because they didn't want me. <laughs> so I spent all night panicking, thinking, how can I be away from my children? But I can't give the opportunity up. So that's what happened. And in that process, the company I worked for promised me all sorts of things. They promised to make me a partner and this and that. And then as time went on, I said, don't tell me lies and make me promises just to keep me here unless it's true. Because I won't trust you then. And that's exactly what they did. And about a year down the line, I realised that they'd been telling me porkers, messing me around. Um, so that was it. When I realised that and cornered the main guy that had been telling me all this, I just walked out there and then. Terrible, really, isn't it? Three children, house to run. But I just thought, I can't work somewhere where I don't trust people. So I left and I got home to my driveway and thought, what have I just done? And then I rang the guy who ran the financial services bit in the agency and said would you have me to work for you or would it be stepping on you know mr so-and-so's toes and he said no i'd have you in a heartbeat so next thing i'm in there i'm broken hearted i grieved for my property career like i've never grieved for a man <laughs> and i was like it was worse than a breakup and the next thing i'm working in this so that's a really long-winded story but that's how it happened and then i was there thinking, amazing i love this this is where i was meant to be i couldn't believe that insurance could be such a calling and that I could I just literally fell in love with it and I thought people aren't doing a good job here like this is crazy people in the company there was loads of advisors but barely anybody was talking about income protection or anything to do with things like that so I was just like huh. and yeah that was where it, where it stemmed from really and I later yeah. more that that's a, a transformational journey. I know you've just condensed it and you probably have so many other cool stories and um, bit of gossip in the industry, I'm sure. But I think what what the highlight for me is that, you know, this is about women in property and finance. This is about women and money. This is about money and the industry. Um, so what about people that are looking to enter or maybe they're already in the industry, but actually they're struggling to find their feet or they're struggling to find their voice? How did you find, because like, we're going to talk about your branding, right? And how you really embraced your brand. But what kind of advice would you give to someone who hasn't yet found their calling? Well, I worked in that company and it was not a good culture in that company. It really wasn't. And it's known for not, it was known for not having a great culture, but I didn't know anything else. Um, so I was fighting within that company, trying to break the ceiling from within. And it just was never happening for me. It was just one whole seven years of frustration. Some of the stories that I could tell you are actually insane. Um, so I just got to a point, again, it's a bit of a theme really, isn't it? Where I thought, I can't do this anymore. I can't. And, and I left very suddenly again with no backup. Um, I was, had my three daughters. I'm single and I had no money behind me whatsoever. Um, I just separated from my husband about a year and a half before. Um, you know, so I was buying him, him out of the house and all this sort of thing. I didn't have a penny behind me, but I just thought I just can't do the things they're wanting me to do anymore. It just doesn't sit right with me. And there's no point in keep trying to break the ceiling and change things within this company. I need to leave to be able to do that. So I think I was always telling my own story and doing things my own way, no matter what. So I had that somehow in a strength, which I think comes from my past. Um, so I had I had the balls, if you like, to do that. You know, that's who I am. But then I realised that I had to leave and set up on my own to do that. And not everybody will have to do that. Maybe they just have to find their perfect partner to work with, i.e., you know, employer. Um, but just be yourself. Don't be anything other than yourself. Don't do things you don't want to do. Our industry has an awful way to go up, in my mind, 
to be where it needs to be. And currently, my view from people that I speak to who are non-industry, do not trust us. A lot of people do not trust us. So until that is rectified, and there is a whole world of things to rectify there, um, of which I'm trying to rectify some or make some small changes that hopefully lead to bigger changes. But I don't think I'll get everything done in my lifetime. Um, so you actually could come into this industry now. It's really exciting and connect with what you're doing. So if you're in the industry already and you're not doing the things you should, i.e. protecting people in the right way, if you're a mortgage advisor just giving mortgage advice only and not protecting people or not making sure they have someone who can protect them, have a little stop, give your head a wobble, that's what I say, have a think about it, about what you're actually doing. You're lumbering somebody with a debt and then because you don't really understand it or it's hassle or it doesn't come natural, you're not protecting them properly. So learn a bit more and connect with that person at the end because we've had calls you know, we had a chap that we'd only insured a couple of months before and he called us and he had throat cancer. And if you haven't done a good job, I mean, you know, we cried all day. Bella, Bella, um, my, my daughter, my, who works with me full time, she spoke to somebody last week, a new client who was recommended, a young, youngish guy last week. And she came back in the room. She, she went and, and did her call in a different room. She came back into the room where we all sit afterwards and was crying her eyes out. And I was thinking, what? I was on, on a call and I was thinking, what's going on? And afterwards, she was sobbing because she'd found out the reason he wanted cover was because the day after asking his fiance to marry him, he, they went to the hospital and his, his fiance to be has got terminal cancer in their early 30s. Oh, my goodness. So we take those calls. So don't be that you know reconnect with what you're doing yeah because it's game changing what you're doing for people you know you can't avoid these awful things happening but just make sure that you've given them that you know safety blanket that you've done what you're meant to be doing so that's yeah. my advice really reconnect and just be yourself and you know in your gut what's right and what's not right and if you're in a company that's not right go and find a company that is right or go on your own Absolutely. You know what? There's more, so many things you've said in there that I want to just pick out just in case anyone's missed them. But number one, you've actually reminded me that it's OK to quit. Like loads of people are like, no, just stick it out, stick it out. Actually, I like quitting. I've actually quit so many things in the past or or quit people or quit a job or quit something, because if it's not right, like you say you need to get out. Don't think that the only way to success is to stick things out and to be the longest standing person in a company. Because as Joanna has experienced and I've experienced, sometimes these are just promises that are made to you, but actually they don't come to fruition. So quit when the time is right, when you know you need to get out, quit. Joanna's also raised the point about working in a supportive environment or working for the right people, reconnecting with your why. Absolutely. Why do you do what you do? And, and how could you not? The sense of duty really comes out in Joanna, like your sense, your calling for duty and not leaving any man down, right? No one, no one's going to be left uh, uh, not looked after is, is, is what I'm getting from you. So that's yeah. really responsible that's not only are you a responsible mum a responsible business owner but you're also responsible in the industry and that that really does come through hence i wanted you on the show but also to talk about some of the other stuff that you're doing outside of work um which is also linked tell us about football oh football this is really good i don't know what's coming next it's like a bit nerve-wracking <laughs> i know but come on it's just us two we're always chatting so actually today funnily enough i put up a post on linkedin and i put um finance football and family because they are super important things to me so finance obviously i just that. liked it because it was all the f's um no swearing uh, <laughs> all the good <laughs> <laughs> and um i thought right i went in and i did a talk at my old it was called lower school back then obviously it's primary and secondary now um on friday and that was just unbelievable i was so nervous it was insane i was like okay so i'm speaking to seven eight nine ten eleven year olds like what's gonna happen what's gonna happen if one of them are awkward if then like i did not know what to expect i've not i've spoken on stage a lot of times i've done lots of presentations 
but never to that age group. So that was really nerve wracking. But just honestly, I can't tell you how amazing. Like, I wish I could just do that every day, but my bills wouldn't get paid. So um, but that, was, <laughs> that was phenomenal. And then we bought into it football because actually um, a, a chap that I'm uh, working closely with, Damon Fox from Northampton Town Community Trust, so Northampton Town Football Club, um, came along with me. So I went to an event put on by my network, Primus, um, a, probably about, might have been two years ago, and it was a leadership event and there was 50 of us there and very few of us were women by the way three of us were women so that was noticed um by me uh, very visually it was not long after one of our lockdowns and it was at the st george's hotel which is at our football hotel right so all the 28 teams train there all the all the different england teams and i absolutely love football and always have diehard fan of tottenham and england you know um through the pain lots and lots of pain and still <laughs> <laughs> um, I grew up in Northampton if you can say that I grew up and I came away from that event and there were a couple of guys a couple of young guys and they'd been supporting sponsoring um a rugby club and I just thought right I literally wrote down straight away oh my god that's what we need to do if it's good enough for the men it's good enough for the women so I'm gonna find um who can I sponsor so I thought Tottenham mm, probably a bit out of my league price wise to sponsor them <laughs> So I was like, Northampton Town, that's where I grew up. So that's where I had my babies. And so, um, yeah, that was it. And my eldest daughter, who lives in Dubai, I came back all excited. It was just one of my ideas. And I'm very quick to action things. I go with my gut. Um, definitely go with my gut now. I didn't use to. I used to hide what my gut was saying and try and think sensibly. Now I just shoot from the gut. So I was like, right, OK, my gut instinct's telling me contact Northampton Town. So I did. And then, you know, really proud to sponsor them um, and their shirt. But it's given me, as with many things, a lot more than I ever expected. So it is a wonderful community. And it's like everyone loves to be part of a community. And it doesn't happen so often anymore. But to see young girls, they've been winning. Um, and then a couple of weeks ago, we were at Sixfield Stadium, their home stadium. And um, we were out on the pitch and we were having photos with the team. And all of that's wonderful. But what really got me was that we played brilliantly. We won the match. And at the end, I went down to see the top scorer and there was all these little girls fangirling this, you know, player at the at the um, stands. And I just thought, oh, my God, I just watched. I just stood back and watched. And I thought, oh, that is so brilliant because Kate, my eldest, she loves football. She plays in Dubai. She had a kick about with Anthony Joshua. Um, she had a night out with Raheem Sterling a couple of months ago. So, you know, it's just like a real passion in our family. I'm, I can't play it, but I love watching it. So, you know, it's and it's an alignment with finance. You finance and football, not enough women. So we need to bring more women in. And then obviously then I was very fortunate that suddenly, you know, the women won the Euros. That was amazing. For the yes, country. what a great time. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I was at the beginning of all this. So it's, it's really good to see it going in that direction absolutely like phenomenal not only what you're doing in the industry but outside the industry for your own community as well as the industry community of uh, financial services and that is what I call you know my, my my strap line for Manuka Media is positive pollination I like surrounding myself with people who I just kind of see myself like I'm a little bee and I'm doing my little bit and then you're and you love honey as well which is the I other thing <laughs> This is the other thing I found really oh, yeah. weird when we started working together. You were like, oh, yeah, your business is all to do with bees. And I was, I love honey. I was like, like, that is a... I think yeah. I asked you before I'd even click that because I judge people on whether they like honey or not. If they yeah. don't like honey, I've got a slight reservation. I've got a slight reservation. Where I yeah. Think, hmm. If you don't like Are honey... You Are you kind? If you don't yes. Like How can you not like honey? It is the food of the God. It is like a cuddle in a piece of... Sort exactly. So it's yeah. like, and that's why we called our brand when we rebranded. And I know we use the same brand strategist because thanks to you, you know, I loved what they did with your brand that I wanted something with mine. But that's why we we still kept the bee theme because of my strong attachment to what bees do for the world and the community and our food and our you know sustainability. And like that's how I see you. I feel like 
you're out there spreading your pollen and your joy and your positivity and you're you're making the world a better place like I'm not taking credit for that but because I couldn't do it on my own like like you said you can't change the world of women in finance on your own or women in property but you're doing your bit I'm doing my bit and that's what positive pollination is and together obviously then the 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 sweet result is honey um or just people actually in the world like we wouldn't be alive if we didn't have or we wouldn't be as well fed let's say um if we didn't have bees so so I love that I also love the fact that you're working with your daughter so before we end the show um tell me just the final words about what it's like working with your daughter in the business and and bringing raising a such a oh guys just such a smart intelligent confident woman who doesn't believe in herself anywhere near as much as she should oh. if Bella's listening to this is isn't that right though Joanna true so that true. she just doesn't realize what she is yet but okay. what is it like for a mother to raise a daughter and bring her in this workplace well you know I, I was feeling really good then I was thinking I've got to the end of this podcast without tears but when oh, you sat oh, there, I was trying to choke and I was like oh so you know for the, the people listening that don't know my story um my mum died the day after I was 19 and that left me bringing up my 12 year old sister with not enough finances in place to make that an easier journey it was a really really tough journey I've had such tough times financially but something in me has always remained resilient and strong and known that there's something better and um, back in those days my girls don't remember so I've got three daughters and you know there's been times where I've been really, really hard up and emotionally not having your mum there oh, is really, really tough um, at all those important times. So you literally live for your children. I know everyone says that and, I'm sh and I believe everyone feels that. But when that is your only, you, you know, your empire is just you're at the top and, and all you're doing is building downwards. You've got nothing above you anymore. Um, it just means the world. And again, it was a happy accident. She can't get insurance herself, by the way, this girl. So oh. she is uninsurable because of her health conditions, which sadly, some I found out when I was pregnant with her and then she was diabetic from age eight. And we've been through the mill with her um, and medically. And she was at a company being really micromanaged and she could only have half an hour lunch break. And it got to the point where she felt that she couldn't go on her medical appointments so she was missing them so as a mum i was like you know liam neeson mode like you're coming to me i'd only just started on my own again didn't have a pot to piddle in um i'd only just started out and as i said i left that company with nothing behind me so but i just thought she can't stay there her health is everything so she came temporarily temporarily while she set up her marketing company which was a, a wall hire you know sweet blooming wall company and it did really well she started to get lots of bookings and then in the meantime but again another happy accident she fell in love with the industry and she is uh, you know she is my daughter and I know she suffers badly from imposter syndrome um and she is stunning to look at you know I think that's really? why she suffers from it because she said people don't take her seriously never have you know she looks like miss world and you know mm. she's a real head turner um and she just always feels like you know people don't take her seriously she's always having to fight imposter syndrome but that girl what honestly it's incredible to me we have people that have been in the industry for years and years and years and then we'll be in a group setting and then something will be said and she'll be like no actually this company this and actually she does it in a nice way but i literally am like i'm inspired like you know, I always say I Pepsi challenge people to know more than me in this industry because I've made it my business because my heart, you know, thinks I can't let people go through what I went through. So if there's an any way that you can be insured, we'll find it. But she is brilliant. And I think she is a real, really a rising star. And I don't mean to make lots and lots of money because I know that's how lots of people in our industry measure themselves. We are not the richest company because we do loads of stuff like going to speak to little girls saying, please come into our industry when you're older. I used to come to this school and I own a company. You can do the same. We don't get paid. That doesn't make us any money. It just makes exactly. us feel good. Yes. And she is on that journey. We were there on Friday and she was my other daughter who goes to uni. She helps us with our trust forms. So she helps in the business too. And she was there and they were like, oh, can we go to my old school? Can we do? 
Yeah, and they just wanted to do more and more of that. And it doesn't make money. So they're in it for the right reasons. And that when you've lost your mum and you haven't had that, to see those below you that you're creating just blooming is like, oh, my God, absolutely. I'm so grateful and I'm so blessed. And she is my inspiration. She is my inspiration. She's amazing. <laughs> She's honestly like just having you, you know, the time that we spent together on Zoom and then I came up to Manchester to watch you I on know. stage and I spent that time together with you guys. It was just... Oh, you and know, she came back could... for you. Do you remember? Because you were yeah. in the restaurant yabbering away like you do. And we were staying at different hotels. And then we went to, we were like, okay, we all said bye. And then we went and she was like, mum, Rosalia's on her own. She like, yeah. we need to go back and make sure she's okay. <laughs> and we'll have to walk her to a hotel. And I was like, oh, like, oh my God. Yeah, no. It and we came just... back and we were like, I know we went, but you know, she's just. I didn't even know you'd gone because I thought, oh, they'll just be outside. But I, I just thought it was so sweet. I would have just walked home on my own, do you know? Because like, like you, it's just someone, I mean, I haven't been through anywhere near the adversity that you've been through, right? I, every time I speak to you, I just think, Roz, get a grip. What are you complaining about? Look what other people Aww. have been through. Like, honestly, like there's just nothing like that that I've been through. Yes, we've had loss in our family. Yes. And actually... Uh, you know, whatever loss I've had or whatever struggles I've been through, I think I am at least a little bit similar to you in the sense that we just have to survive. And then we don't just go to the point of survival. We go to the point of thriving. Like yeah, we, we right. don't just look after ourselves. We then end up trying to look after everyone else. And like, like you, I also go into schools and I help bring financial education and business knowledge into schools as well. Don't get paid a penny for that. But it was like it's some of my best days that I get to spend in my business empowering the next generation. And so you've got all that under one roof. You've got your daughter coming up. You've got you, you've got your past. And yeah, it's just a wonderful story. And if anyone wants to connect with Joanna, if you haven't been following her on social, um, I've got all of her um, handles here in the show notes. So click below and you'll be able to see where Joanna is, who she is, where, you know, what she's doing. Um, but what, what last words, you know, just as we come to an end, what would you like to say to anyone listening to this? And I mean, anyone, it could be lenders, it could be brokers, it, it could be women just looking from the outside in. What, what do you want to leave them with after today? I suppose what I'd love to always leave people with is just think if you can do something different and something better. So if you're in this industry and you don't really enjoy it, and you know in your gut it's not really where you should be, leave. Go and find where you are best. Do something that you can leave a legacy. And then for lenders um, and providers and things like that, I think there's loads of work that we can do together. And I'm working with some, um, and I'm really excited to see that. And again, you know, let's just simplify things. And you know, not just think about what profits and let's just think, look, that end product, that end product is having people covered. That end product to me goes as far up to government, honestly, like if you knew the ambitions I have in terms of making changes, they're huge because I just think that there's so much more, so many more things we can do responsibly. And then I just think we are an amazing country and yes, women do have many more equal rights. I mean, I'm looking at Qatar right now, being a football fan, like, you know, and I'm thinking it's, we forget how lucky we are. And I know women should have equal rights automatically, but we haven't always had. And we don't realize what a strong position we're in, in the UK as a woman. I think that there's exciting times ahead. And whilst I still want there to be lots of young guys coming in and helping freshen up our industry, I really would love my legacy if I could leave this earth knowing that not only have I inspired my daughter to come into this industry full time, um, that if there was a few others and, you know, five, ten people, you know, anything beyond that would be mind blowing. Just young girls that I've inspired to come in to the industry and connect with it. Insurance isn't boring. It can be so much fun. We have belly laughs in our office like you wouldn't believe, um, <laughs> you know, and, and if you want job satisfaction, connect with what you're doing sit back don't think about commission this all that will come you know and just think about what you're doing really and yeah Thank you, to Joanna. no that that is the best That's advice cool. absolutely phenomenal because 
guys, this is why we're bringing you the money, honey. This uh, this show has been brought to you because women in the industry have been asking me, Roz, do something about it, create a show. Um, but there's no show if these women aren't brave enough to speak. If these women will not show up and say yes to my um, to my proposal to come on the show, then there would be no show. Um, so please take this advice on. Joanna's taken time out of a busy day to share with you some inspiration, her journey, her top tips. Um, I'm sure if you want more, you can reach out. Um, but also you, you need to speak up. Who do you know that needs to be on this show? Who? What story needs to be shared out there? Maybe someone else is, is doing some sponsorship or charity or anything else in the industry that you want to hear from. Please um, recommend them, volunteer them and connect them to, to me, Rosalia. But thanks again, Joanna, for being on the show and uh, keep doing what you're doing and I'll catch up with you offline. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you.